What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I cannot even begin to express to you guys how happy I am to finally be sitting down and making a video for you. I filmed this about five times now and cried every single time just because I'm such a big baby and I love what I do and I love creating these videos for you and I love helping these families and every time I have to step back for life or anything that's happening, it's really, really difficult for me. Um, but as you can tell, I'm not in the same space that I was. I actually have moved the past couple of weeks. Um, it's been a huge adventure. I essentially have a mini farm. So it was quite the process and it took a lot of time away to get settled, get the animals settled, my kids settled. But I am back now and I'm so happy to be here for you guys and I wanted to go ahead and get this video out to you. And this is going to be a much smaller video than I typically would do, but I have received a handful of emails and DMs lately um, and suggestions through my submission form for me to cover this case from locals, people that are upset um, and really don't want this murder to go unsolved for much longer. Um, and there's not a lot of information, as I said, on this case, pretty much total slim pickings online. You cannot find anything but a handful of articles and like one interview. But everyone in the community does not want this case to remain unsolved. And considering the circumstances of the case, it's very difficult to understand why it still remains unsolved. But I need to thank Skillshare for partnering with me on today's video. You guys have heard me rave about Skillshare all the time. They're an online community that is built for those with a curious and creative minds, myself definitely being one of those. There are thousands of classes that are exploring all sorts of skills and interests from gardening to art to cooking, filmmaking, podcasting. There's even classes on personal development. Also great because there's something for every single skill level, whether you want to just start a new hobby to do from home, or you want to create an entire business from scratch. Skillshare classes are set up in a really awesome way. They're easily digestible, segmented videos. It's the best way I can explain it. So you take classes at your own pace. You can see exactly what you're learning in every single class. And that's probably one of my favorite parts about Skillshare because it's really beneficial for me when I already know something about a certain topic so I can see if there's information I already know. I can kind of skip ahead to the things that I'm really focused on learning. My favorite class that I've taken recently, I cannot wait to share with you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that one of my biggest things in life is I want to know where my food comes from and I want to grow food and be able to be self-sufficient. I genuinely think one of the most important skills someone could have is knowing how to grow their own food. So I was thrilled when I found the class Indoor Gardening, Grow Houseplants, Veggies, and Herbs with Ekta Chaudhary on Skillshare. It literally takes you through every single step you could possibly need to learn how to start seeds and take care of your plants and you know the different needs that they may have. It talks about house plants, but it also goes into talking about how to use your space. It shows how you can use your space indoors or possibly on a patio to learn how to grow your own food and not feel so restricted by the space you think might not be enough. Skillshare is honestly just this giant treasure trove of knowledge and as someone who wants to learn about absolutely everything. It is definitely a place that I can get lost for hours. I know so many of you guys are very curious about podcasting, YouTubing. You love seeing my gardening journey on Instagram. This is something that I think all of you guys should check out. And right now, Skillshare has an awesome offer for you guys. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start to explore your creativity and all these different hobbies and skills. Thank you again to Skillshare for partnering with me on today's video. And now into the details of this case. So as I stated before, there's not a whole lot of information on this particular case. It's from 2017, so it's also not new. Um, and it's going to take the right person coming forward for this case to be solved. And I genuinely believe and authorities believe, and I'm pretty sure everyone just in general believes that there's plenty of people out there that have answers and they're just not coming forward. So this video is about the murder of 20 year old Julian Quintero from Castroville, California. Now, Julian had the nickname of Captain America, and it was not just because he loved Captain America from what I've seen of his room. I mean, just top to bottom Captain America decor, but also because he himself was considered a superhero by everyone that knew and loved him. Julian's mother, Lupe, has said that he stood for people. He stood for everyone. 
He would help anyone that needed it. He would give you the shirt off of his back. He just loved to support and be there for everybody in his life. His brother said, and I quote, he was always smiling. He was very happy, very vibrant. Julian's probably the only person I've ever met I could never be angry at. He's just a perfect kid. Growing up, Julian always had tons of friends. He always excelled in school. He excelled in sports. He had just like this radiant smile that was contagious. He was well known in the town as a football player. I mean, everyone knew who Julian was in Castroville. Every younger individual for the most part looked up to him. He was known also as being a baseball player. He ran track. And in 2014, he ended up being voted as prom king at North Monterey High where he attended high school. And he did all of this without skipping a beat. He always had multiple jobs. He was such a hard worker. He somehow managed to balance school, work, sports, family, friends, all seamlessly. So he was just this really great role model. And because he could do all of that, he was referred to as Captain America. At the time of his death, he was attending Monterey Peninsula College, hoping to eventually transfer to a four-year college, a four-year university uh, with big plans for his life. But all of that changed one night when Julian was killed while trying to protect others. And there's people out there that everyone's pretty confident know who did this and what happened, and they are not coming forward, and it's about time that they did. While Julian was very social, according to his family, he was not one to party much. On the night of January 22nd, 2017, his friend convinced him to head to a party at 9634 Knollwood Court in a neighborhood called Oak Hill. Now, from my understanding, and I've only seen this stated on one article, so this could be incorrect. If anyone tells me it is, I will, as always, kind of leave that down below in a comment or in the description box. But it seems like he was actually going more so to be a bouncer at this party. He had already graduated from high school, and this party was being held for seniors. So he was kind of there, obviously, just to enjoy himself, but also because he's this popular guy. He was really strong, muscular, big guy, and, and he was supposed to be a bouncer, just make sure that everything went okay. Now, right before he left, he spoke to his mother. She was very well aware that he was going to this party, and she let him know that if he needed anyone to pick him up later that night, that she would, without hesitation, come and get him. So just before midnight, when Lupe received a phone call from Julian's phone, she assumed that this was her call to go and pick him up, but what she answered was a call from a frantic person that was not Julian, saying that Julian had just been shot and was being taken to the hospital. According to small bits of information that were told to authorities and told to Lupe, the party was massive. There were around 90 individuals at this party, and when parties get that large, word spreads, and it draws in a lot more people. You have people probably posting on Snapchat and Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I mean, you name it, that they're at this party. And friends of friends are gonna be like, hey, where's this at? Can we stop by? And like, it just ends up trickling into this giant thing where you just have a ton of people showing up at this one person's house. And unfortunately, this party caught the attention of an unsavory group of people. Now, none of my research told me if these people were known to the party goers. I know that these individuals were not invited, um, this group that showed up. I don't know if they just like saw a party and they lived nearby and they showed up or drove by and saw a party and tried to show up. Um, I'm not sure what the circumstances are, but an uninvited and unwanted group of people showed up to the party just before midnight. Now, because Julian was kind of playing bouncer that night, he was there confronting these individuals as they tried to push their way into the home. And he was also one of the individuals trying to get them out of the home. And unfortunately, this ended up starting a fight because they were told to leave, that they were not wanted there, they had to get out, a fight broke out. During this fight, Julian jumped in to defend one of his good friends that was there. And as soon as he did this, he was shot in the back three separate times. 
And from this point, obviously, chaos ensued. People probably dispersed. I mean, as someone who's been to teenage parties and like things like that, I can imagine everyone heard those gunshots, first of all, and ran for safety. I'm sure people probably ran because they didn't want to get in trouble. I don't know if underage drinking was involved at this party. All I know is that it probably was just mass chaos and those who were there for Julian called 911 frantically trying to get help. Now, like I said, there's not much information online. I have absolutely no idea how many individuals authorities have questioned. I can only assume the lack of information is partially due to the fact that most of these individuals were likely minors, but all of this combined is the reason why I think this case is at a total standstill because you have all these kids that are probably scared, um, all of these minors that it's very hard to get them in for questioning. So you can see how this is just a very difficult situation. I know that authorities have been able to question some of the individuals at the party, but I doubt they even know the names of all 90 people that were there. It doesn't seem like anyone can say who this group was that showed up. I don't know if that's because they're protecting them or if it's because they genuinely don't know who these individuals are. But what I do know is that authorities have stated that there's no way that out of 90 people, nobody saw what happened. No one saw who had a gun. Um, no one knew these people somehow, again, with word of mouth kind of spreading about this party. The most likely thing that happened is that someone saw a party was going on, recognized where it was at or was told by a friend of a friend who was there, and then they showed up. But every single person they've spoken to at this party and everyone who has willingly come forward has said they have absolutely no idea who the person was that shot the gun that killed Julian. Julian's family has held vigils for him. Um, there are tributes to him online. Everyone is so confused and devastated. It's a really tricky situation because I understand in a moment like that, there's a lot of chaos. If there had been drinking, you could have a bunch of individuals that are underage that are first of all scared. They're even more scared when they hear gunshots. They're even more scared when they know police are going to come. There may be a lot that a lot of people just didn't notice because they were so stuck in their own fear. But you also cannot tell me there was not a single person that saw who was holding a gun. When you have 90 plus people standing in a, a space, you know, someone stood beside this person that shot Julian. Um, are they trying to protect a friend? Even if this was an accident, if this was a party goer that was maybe shooting at this group of people thinking they were protecting someone and accidentally hit Julian. There's just so many different reasons why a lot of these individuals that may know something don't want to come forward. However, it's really heartbreaking to know that this young individual with so much life ahead of him was shot trying to protect someone and nobody has the decency to do the same back for him. Authorities have released that they know for a fact there are people that were at this party that have leads that they have not shared. Authorities are encouraging these people to come forward and get this off of their chest because this one detail could be the one thing that cracks this entire case and brings justice to Julian that he deserves and that his family deserves. Authorities can only get so far if people are not willing to be honest and be brave and come forward and say something. And I'm hoping that maybe because people have grown at this point, they're a couple years older, this is weighing on someone's conscious. And I don't think it's just the person that shot the gun. I think there are numerous people that know and it is weighing on them heavily. This murder tore apart an entire town. He was setting such a good example for so many people and so many young adults that wanted to follow in his footsteps and work as hard as he did and you know go for their goals as hard as he did and that was just entirely pulled away and i saw this in every single email and dm and submission people locally that just say they were devastated that this was someone doing so much good in the community and the fact that they could do that much good and and someone won't just come forward and be honest in return is so heartbreaking. I'm going to leave all the information down below. 
where you can contact anyone if you have any information about this case. I genuinely think that people in that town just need to be shaken up a little bit more. People that possibly might know something. Um, there's no way 90 people just didn't see a thing and didn't hear a thing and haven't heard rumors or anything that could potentially give authorities the leads they need to figure out what happened. On that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to Julian's story. Unfortunately, I have not seen a GoFundMe or any way in which you can help the family other than just spreading this information and hoping that someone comes forward. But if that changes, I will leave any link that I can down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can become a part of the Hallen fam so that we can hopefully bring them home together. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.